are three freshly boiled lobsters, one for each member of the family. And here's a lazy way to eat them, lobster thermidor. See the cook do the work today on the French Chef. The French Chef is made possible by a grant from Hills Brothers Coffee Incorporated and by a grant from the Polaroid Corporation. <clears throat> I'm having my in-laws for dinner tonight and I decided I wanted to treat them like people. So I'm going to give them lobster thermidor. As a matter of fact, it's a dish I like very much myself too. The lobster thermidor is, is a marvelous kind of a party dish because what it is is just lo cooked lobster meat that's put in a delicious sauce and then put back into the shells. You can put it just in a dish and you can prepare it way ahead of time. And you can use uh, a good quality of canned or frozen lobster meat or, or fresh lobster meat. Of course, I'm going to use fresh because I happen to have them today. And here it is. And this one has all been boiled. I'm doing it somewhat the lazy way, but I've got a good fish market and he boiled it for me. But one thing he told me, when you ever buy a live lobster, be sure that the shell, that the tail is tight, tightly curled and it springs right back. If it's limp and flat out, it means that the lobster was dead when it was put in the water and it's got to be fresh if it's gonna taste good. And for this, this uh, lobster thermidor, you can serve individual servings of one and a quarter pounds, and I'm going to do a big lobster of two and a half pounds. And I've got to clean it. And one of the best things to use is one of these lobster shears. Or you can use kitchen pointed shears. And the first thing to do is to take the legs and the claws off from the other s underside and take them off as close to the chest as you can. These are wonderful, wonderfully big claws. But I find some people say that the only tender lobsters are ones that are, oh, a pound and a quarter. But I find that these great big ones are just as tender. And now after you've got your claws off, you have to, what you want to do, because you're going to serve the lobster in the shell, is you want to keep the shell absolutely whole. And I like to take the cut it out from either, cut the meat out, getting the, I can't explain what I mean anyway. What I'm going to do is to start on the soft underbelly of the tail and cut along both sides between the edge of the tail or stomach shell up to, up to this scalloped edge which forms the back. And then the tail meat is right under that, and I'm trying not to disturb the tail meat. And then here's this, this under skin that just peels right off the tail meat right up to the chest meat. And then that gets cut off, and there it is. And be sure that you save all these trimmings, because you can make a nice lobster stock with them afterwards. And then... Just lift the tail up, and then be very careful as you come up towards the chest, because here's your lobster shell, and here's the tail meat and the chest meat, the chest shell, and it is attached very delicately, and I want to keep it all together. So just gradually pull that tail up gently, and then it just pulls out, and there it is. And then you have the chest meat to take out, but you see how very tenderly it's hinged right here, so the whole point of that is just doing it very carefully indeed. And then when you come to the chest meat, this you can lift out, but I think it's a good idea to start it with a little bit of, a little bit of scissor snip at the very beginning. And then gently lift it up there. And if it catches, just cut it a little bit. Then as it comes up to the chin here, you just bend it back. 
This is all this gingerness is to keep it from the shell from breaking at all. See, it's just bent right back there. Then you have inside the shell, you notice you have your, your this what is called green matter or tamale, and this is really the most part of the most delicious part of the lobster. Is it's soft and lovely and has a lovely flavor to it. So this you want to save and have a little bowl and a sieve and just scrape it out gently with a spoon. And this is a female lobster, so besides green matter, it has some coral, so it's pink and, pink and green and very pretty. And put that in a sieve and then carefully up toward the nose, we're going to find the sand sack, and that is inedible. You want to take that out. Just lift in with your fingers and gently pull it out. And you see, there it is. This is really the stomach, and it's covered with a little filament. You want to get that out without breaking it, and there's another bit of the coral. Those are lobster eggs. And put those into your sieve, and this lady or sand sack, I don't know why they call it a lady, goes into a, a discard bowl, because that you can't use for anything. And then take your spoon, and there's a, some white, white matter. I don't know what that is, but that's awfully good, too, and put that all into the sieve. The reason you want to sieve it out because you're going to use the you're going to use the this green matter and white matter and red matter all for flavoring your sauce. And now you start getting the actual meat on. And you notice the chest has these fuzzy things. I guess those are gills, and these you just pull off, and those are inedible, so put those in your discard pile, and there's some on each side. Then you have a lot of simply delicious meat in the chest. It takes quite a while to get out. I'm not going to take all of it out. I'm just going to take a little bit out. But pull it apart lengthwise, and then there's sort of joints and segments, and these you pull apart. And there are these delicious little nuggets of meat in there. Well, it's just as a matter of just pulling with your, with your fingers. I think this is some of the most delicious and delicate meat of the lobster. Evidently, if you go to a lobster factory, they, they'll just give you these, the chest, because it's too much work, and then save, after you've gotten all the meat out of the chest, save all of that, because this is all part of your kitchen treasure, and then your bits of meat go into your plate. And be sure that, naturally, as with all fish, dishes that the lobster smells perfectly delicious. And be sure also if you're going to use this tamale or green stuff that, has, that that has a delicious flavor too and smell. Because sometimes if, the, if you haven't gotten a good quality lobster, you'll find that the tamale part has, I don't know, sm smells like diesel oil. And that means that it was a harbor lobster rather than a deep sea one. And now you've got your chest meat and you've got to get the intestine out. So on the outside curve where it's red, cut down about a quarter of an inch right down the middle, and then pull that apart with your fingers. And this one, being a lady, there's still some more coral there, but you're supposed to find a little intestinal tube, and sometimes it's white and sometimes it's black, but it goes all the way down the top of the back This is the top of the tail, about half an inch. Maybe I said this was a chest. It's the tail, obviously. Uh, there's your little intestinal tube. And you put that in your discard pile. And then you want to dice the meat, the tail meat, into a pieces about, oh, half an inch across. Because you don't want just a lot of little tiny bits of lobster and lobster thermidor. You want some nice big pieces. And then these go into your pie plate. I'm doing two lobsters of this size. Now we have the claws. And usually they have some kind of a 
business that holds the two claws together, I mean, call the jaws together, and you have the lower and the upper part. And you want to get the claw meat out whole, take the lower part and just bend it right back at right angles. And this didn't happen. I'm going to take the other claw. When you bend it back at right angles, there is, and do it slowly enough, there, that's what I'm looking for, is this piece of gristle. And that, save and put in your bone pile, and then there's a little piece of, lovely little piece of meat right in it, that one. And then you have the main part of the claw meat and take your scissors and cut up one side of it. And then if you want to save the claws for decorations, cut up the other side too, and then cut right across it. And then you can use part of this claw as your decoration and fill it with your meat. See, there's your piece of claw meat that has come out whole. And sometimes there's some white stuff in the claw, and in that case, put it in your tamale bowl. And then you do the next claw exactly the same way. And then you have the joint meat. And the joint, I must say, is one of my favorites, too. Because that seems that the joint meat, like the chest meat, has a, is very delicate. And there, after you've opened that up, you have that lovely amount of meat there. And there's a little bit of white, which goes into the tamale pile and the shells, into the shell bowl. And that's slightly too big. So I'll cut it up into two pieces. And then you have your other claw and your other joint, which you do in exactly the same way. And this claw I'm going to save and use for something else. And you have your little little legs, and that also has delicious meat in it. It takes a long time to get out. So either eat that yourself or save them for decoration. And then you have your this tamale in the sieve, and take a tough spoon and just push it all the way through. I think I'll have to have a tougher spoon. And this is because they're always some bits of shell in here. And these you have to get out. And then save all of this. And this is going to be for the sauce later. And then we have, I've got two of these lobsters. So we have two shells. And we have all the meat out. And one of these two and a half pound lobsters gives you about two and a half to three cups of meat. So they're really a good buy. And then I like also to mix with lobster thermidor some mushrooms. It sort of fills out a little bit. And we have about five cups of meat. And I want about two cups of quartered fresh mushrooms, which means quartering. There's your whole mushroom. And you take the stem and cut it in half lengthwise, and then cut it in bias pieces. And if you have a large head like this, cut it in half, and then cut it in thirds, which are called quarters. Mainly, it is that all the pieces are the same size. And then these are going to be stewed mushrooms, so put two or three tablespoons of water in. And then to keep the mushrooms white, or about a tablespoon of lemon juice squeezed through a clean towel so that you don't get any seeds in it, and then some salt and some butter. Then those cook covered for just oh, about five or six minutes. About half a teaspoon of salt and a tablespoon of butter, and then toss them around to cover them with the liquid and put the cover on and then set them off and let them cook. Now, you have your lobster meat, which you want to flavor up. And this is true if, if it's either cooked lobster meat or particularly if it's canned or frozen meat. But this, a little butter treatment. 
is going to make it turn a lovely rosy color. I'm putting in about three tablespoons of butter there and about a tablespoon of shallots. And then in goes the lobster meat. This is very much like making a, making a New England lobster stew. You let that cook in the butter with some salt and pepper. Put in a little bit of salt and a little bit of white pepper. And then it should, and for this recipe, it should have some tarragon, about a quarter teaspoon of tarragon. Then after this is cooked for two or three minutes over moderate heat, and it has begun to turn pink and rosy, <clears throat> you then put some cognac in, about a quarter of a cup of very good cognac. And if you don't have very good cognac, just leave out the cognac. And then you want to let that cook until the cognac is completely evaporating. And then you're now ready to make the sauce. And you want a delicious, creamy, lobstery sauce. And the base of it is, guess who? Our old friend, the velouté. And to make the sauce absolutely delicious, you should really have a lobster stock if you're using fresh lobster. And these are all the shells that you've saved here. And you simply simmer them for 30 minutes with <clears throat> a glass of about a cup of white wine or white vermouth and carrots, a carrot and an onion sliced and a bay leaf and some more tarragon and water to cover. Let it simmer, then strain it out and boil it down until it has a lovely flavor. And it looks like that and tastes perfectly delicious. And then you're ready to make our dear old friend. And this is going to have, we want about two and a half cups. So we want about three tablespoons of butter. I'll find this melted butter very useful to have. And then a quarter of a cup of flour. Just regular all-purpose flour. And that is to cook slowly to make a roux, R-O-U-X. And then the, and then this delicious stock goes in and it will be finally a velouté. And remember that this has to cook for about two minutes without coloring so that you cook the flour. And then in goes your lobster stock. And if you don't have fresh lobster, use the same flavorings, but use a little bit of clam juice. Or you may just have to leave it out altogether. Then after your roux has stopped bubbling, in goes your hot saw, your hot stock. And then you want it to come up to the boil, and then you and then you add a little bit more liquid as necessary. If you run out of liquid, you could use, you could just use milk. But as this kind of a French dish, the more, the more flavor you have, the better. Now that's very, very thick, but I'm gonna allow it to be very thick. But we also have our mushroom juices, which I almost forgot. And those go in. That's one, another reason why it's so nice to have the mushrooms. And now after you've got your, your velouté, you're ready to turn it into a thermidor. And we have here this sieve tamale. And into that you put two egg yolks. And beat that all up. And then you have, surprisingly not enough, about a whole tablespoon of hot mustard, this powdered mustard. You think that's an awful lot, and then you'll think this is going to be an awful lot too, of putting in a good pinch of cayenne or several drops of this hot pepper sauce. And then a little bit of cream. This is all part of this recipe, having all this flavor in. And then, very gradually, 
You beat in your hot, your hot velouté. That's to heat the egg yolks gradually. And then this, this goes back into your velouté pan. And then you simmer it. And there's some little bits of coral that haven't, that I didn't sieve very well, but that also gives, gives a little consistency to the sauce. But you can see if you, if you left any bones in your tamale, it would be terrible. Now this has to come up to the boil and the egg yolks don't curdle because you have them in a flour-based sauce and you've been very careful of heating them gradually by having the hot stock go in. And you want it to be thick. I think this is a little bit too thick, so I want some heavy cream in. You see, the whole point is, is always adding the liquids gradually so that you end up with just the right consistency. The origin of, of Thermidor is presumably, it was invented in January 1894 in a restaurant in Paris to celebrate the opening of a play called Thermidor. And this Thermidor was the was one of the months of the French Revolutionary calendar, and Thermidor was the months of July and August, which are very hot. And so that's why you have the mustard and the cayenne in. But it's always with these things, you don't have so much mustard, and you have just enough. And if you, when you taste it, and if you find that it isn't quite hot enough, you can put in a little bit more. And that seems a little bit thick, so I'm putting in a little more cream. You see that's come up nicely to the boil so it is all it's all ready to go and I'm going to clean up my work table a little bit here and we're really now ready to sauce the meat, the lobster meat. You see once you get the lobster all cleaned out it isn't too terribly much of a problem to do this recipe and it's a nice thick sauce. And then you notice with your <coughs> lobster meat, you want to have cooked it down until the cognac has almost completely disappeared. And I've left these big claw pieces whole. And the mus and the, the mushrooms now go in, which is always a good idea because that it means you don't have to have quite as much lobster. There's still a little sauce there, which I will leave. But now that makes quite a reasonable amount. Now be very, very, very sure that you carefully taste your lobster sauce. Because it has to be absolutely perfect. Very good. I'm, I think I'm going to put a little tiny bit of lemon juice in there. You often find that with with creamy things that they need some lemon juice. And then put enough lobster sauce in there just to enrobe the meat. And then you're ready to fill your lobster shells. And there they are. Now if you don't have, if you don't have if you don't have live lobsters, you can use an attractive kind of a, of a baking dish and just use exactly the same recipe and just put the, put the meat in the baking dish. And I've left, purposely left some, this large claw meat here so that people know what they're getting. Well, there's a very large claw meat, which I'm going to put right up in the top of the chest. See, if I did, hadn't had some mushrooms, too, I don't think these lobsters would look quite as full. But having these large lobsters, you really get more, more meat for your money.
Actually, I have a little bit left, which I can eat myself later on, just to see if it's really any good. Now, you've saved some of your sauce, so the sauce goes over the lobster meat. Really, having this, this sieve tamale in the sauce makes it perfectly glorious. And then having and that little bit of cognac in the lobster meat does, well, it's, this really is a lovely recipe. I don't wonder it's so famous. And then you put a little bit of cheese on. Now the great thing about this recipe is that you can do all of this part ahead of time. You could even, if you have very good fresh lobsters in a good refrigerator, you could do all of this the day before. I've got to clean up that plate. Then put on a little bit of melted butter, and that will let them brown nicely. Now I do, you do have these claws. Now these I could have filled and put them on either side. I sort of forgot about them. But you do want to brace, brace them up nicely. And if you find that the lobsters aren't braced, you could even put the claws in upside down. Now I can see that I missed, I moved it so I missed one piece there. There. Now, it's all of that can be done ahead of time. This really makes this a very nice company dish. And it has the most, I don't think it has the most first class taste of any lobster dish that I know. And so whenever you're ready to bake them then, you preheat your oven to 425 degrees and in they go. And these should go into the upper, upper third of the oven because they brown better. And this is preheated 425, and they'll take about 20 to 25 minutes until they're all bubbling and the top is browned nicely. And then, out they come. And you're all ready to serve. Now I think that, as you know, you can time it for about 20 to 25 minutes. It's best to serve them when they're right done. Now this one, this is a giant lobster, seven pounds, and it'll serve six people. And it's just as tender as it can be. And it's just perfectly lovely. And I think it makes a tremendous effect, all hot and bubbly. Now you'd never believe this magnificent creature was all stuffed and ready and just sort of waiting patiently for the doorbell. And that's the nice thing about you, because you as the cook, you can relax too. Because once you've finally fixed a lob lobster this way, you know you've got it all made. So that's all for today on The French Chef. This is Julia Child. Bon appétit. The French Chef has been made possible by a grant from the Polaroid Corporation and by a grant from Hills Brothers Coffee Incorporated. Julia Child is co-author of the book, Mastering the Art of French Cooking.